Hey everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about another one of my personal favourite plants, the Pilea pepper and weeds. So the Pilea pepper and weeds is also commonly known as the Chinese money plant. It's kind of another common variety of house plant, depending where you're from, I suppose. Uh, they're kind of semi-common where I live. I guess one of the reasons why they're so popular is they have such a unique look about them. They have these really cool disc shaped leaves and yeah they're just really easy to keep. So these are an easy house plant to keep but they're not on the same level as like a pothos or a philodendron or something like that. They're easy but they're not the same. This is because the environment these plants come from is vastly different from the majority of your other tropical indoor plants. Like pothos, philodendrons, schifleras, peace lilies. Dracaenas, all that sort of stuff. Their care is all fairly similar, give or take a couple of little details here and there. Where the Pilea pepperomoides, yeah, it's an easy plant, but it does have um, a couple of things that differ it from other house plants that you do need to take on board when you take one of these homes. So to get a better understanding of what their differences are and why they need them, uh, you need to kind of have an idea of where they come from. So the Chinese money plant, as the name suggests, comes from China but it's actually found in mountain ranges growing at very high altitudes. So basically it's a plant that's growing on cliff edges and between rocky walls and crevices uh, and because of that its roots aren't really growing in much of any soil in the world they're kind of just hanging on to the edge of a mountain wedged between rocks on a cliff edge or something like that. So what happens when it rains? Water just runs straight through the roots very quickly and then goes away. Rather than like a tropical plant when it rains and the soil stays damp for quite a long time and those roots are sitting in that damp soil for however long, a few days, a week, whatever. These guys in the wild when it rains, the roots get wet for a short amount of time until it stops raining and then the water dries up again. But that's how these plants like it. They don't like their roots to be wet for too long of a time. So I guess that would classify these plants as an epiphyte which are plants that grow on other plants or on other surfaces that aren't soil. Um, I don't know if it's actually categorized as an epiphyte, but it seems to live just like one, so we'll just call it one for the sake of simplifying things. But the problem is when you buy these, they're gonna be in a nursery pot with soil, and that's not how they grow in the wild. So one thing you do need to keep in mind when you buy these plants is they don't want their roots to be wet for any long period of time. So I would advise repotting these in a well-draining soil when you get them home. Not straight away though, because when you bring a plant home from the nursery, it's already stressed, it's already changing from one condition to another. It goes from the nursery to your home. It's going to have different lighting, different temperatures, different humidity levels, all that sort of stuff, and that's already stressful, so repotting a plant when you first get it home isn't a great idea. Let it settle for at least a month before you repot it, but I would advise if they haven't done it already at the nursery, repot it into a well draining soil. So mix up a soil mix of perlite, you can put some pumice in there if you have pumice, um, you can even put a bit of orchid bark in the soil, just so there's a good mix of different varied things that allow for good drainage. But honestly if you wanted to keep it simple, just a mix of soil and perlite would be fine, but I would almost do like a 50-50 mix of soil and perlite, you want to actually have quite a bit of perlite because like I said, they like their roots to be dry for most of the time. So good drainage is key for these plants. So ideally you want to just water this and water drains straight through the pot and out the bottom pretty quickly. And within like a couple of days, the soil's dry again. You don't want this soil to stay wet for any long period of time like you would in say a peace lily who, who likes having its roots wet almost all the time. What can happen if these plants are wet for too long they will just start to deteriorate. The leaves will turn yellow and start dropping off quite quickly. And once these plants start losing leaves, it's very hard to bring them back because they only grow a new leaf every so often. They're not that fast at growing new leaves compared to a lot of other species of houseplants. So the time it takes to regrow all those leaves that it could have lost from wet soil will take ages to recover basically. That aside, the lighting requirements for these are pretty stock standard as far as houseplants go. Bright indirect light, they do quite well. Uh, medium indirect light, I found they, they can live in it, but they don't do amazing in it. 
they, they're kind of struggling, I've found. I've had polypeptidomyelitis in the past in more medium indirect light, and they just didn't do that great. Uh, but this particular one is in bright indirect light. It's right next to, it's just to the side of a window with another window behind it. Um, it doesn't get direct sun though, and that's also one thing you want to consider. Um, a little bit of direct sun, if it happens to fall onto this plant, is fine, like a couple of hours of morning or afternoon sun, provided it's not too intense, it's, it can tolerate that because it does have pretty thick, fleshy leaves. Um, they're not overly prone to crisping up and burning quickly in sun, so it can tolerate a little bit of like morning sun or something like that, but ideally just very bright indirect light and no direct sun, if you can give it that, it'll, it'll do great for you. When it comes to actually giving this plant water, because like I was saying before, it does need well draining soil. And you want that soil to completely dry out for at least a few days between watering. So water the plant, let the pot fully drain out. Hopefully it drains out quickly because you'll have a well draining soil mix in there. Put it back in its spot once you're done watering it because you'll just take it to your sink and water it, let it drain, put it back in its spot what you would want to achieve is for the soil to completely dry out within at least a few days and then leave it dry for a few more days before watering it again. Give it a period of time where it's 100% dry. Because as I said, they don't like their roots wet permanently. And I know this because I've made this mistake in the past with these. I've been a bit too generous with watering too frequently um, or I've had them in a mix that wasn't well draining enough and after a few months they just started losing leaves quite quickly and the whole plant just died pretty much. But I've kind of come good with this one, this one's doing pretty well. And um, yeah, it's just all about well draining soil. And, letting, and honestly, almost skipping a watering every now and again. If you're one of those people that is very heavy handed with watering and likes to water plants quite a lot, you really do have to hold yourself back on this one and just maybe overlook this one when you're watering all your plants every now and again it's not going to miss a watering if you forget about it for a little bit. Because with water in this, less is honestly more. One other thing with these I've found is just a little bit more of a sensitive thing compared to uh, other types of, I guess, more common plants, like again, like pothos and philodendrons and a lot of the other plants I've covered in my previous plant videos, except for the alocasias, of course, they're a nightmare to keep, but um, uh, they don't like overly high temperature. Now, because these are growing up in high altitudes, in mountain ranges, um, they're usually on like rock ledges that are kind of shadowed and a bit shaded so they're not getting direct sun. Um, there's a lot of, lot of um, air circulation and it doesn't get too hot where they are. So you kind of want to keep these guys at a slightly cooler temperature if you can. They can tolerate up to 30 degrees Celsius but they do better around 25 or even a bit lower. So I'd say anywhere from 20 to 28 degrees they do pretty good once you get up to 30 they can tolerate it but they're not happy in those sort of conditions once it gets over 30 degrees again you'll start noticing this plant might start wilting and losing leaves and I know this because this is also something that's happened to me with these in the past um, my bedroom gets very hot during summer because I'm on the top floor and during summertime my room gets so hot during the day and I had one of these in my room and it was doing great all winter because I had the correct soil mix, it was growing, doing well. As soon as summer hit and I was getting like 30 to 35 degree days and my room would heat up all day to just be ridiculously hot, this plant just started wilting and losing leaves. As for propagating these, it's pretty straightforward and easy too. They're not the sort of plant you take cuttings from like a vining plant or even like a dracaena. Um, you'll notice with my one, it's got all little baby plantlets popping up around it and this happens when the mother plant is doing well. So when your main plant, your mother plant, has grown a little bit and it's reached a certain size like this, it will just start producing little baby plantlets around it. You'll notice little baby plants just popping up in your pot around the mother plant. And you can leave them there and they'll grow perfectly fine into fully formed plants. Or you can just let them grow a little bit and take them out. You can just kind of dig them up and cut them from the mother plant. Just make sure when you cut them away from the mother plant, you do cut them away so they have some roots attached to them as well. And then you can just put them in their own pot. 
These plants do like to be a little bit compact in a pot too. They don't need a massive pot, so uh, try and hold back on repotting if you can. Uh, I mean, if you want to repot them, I'd only do it maybe every two years. Uh, these plants do not mind being in a slightly compact pot. I mean, look, if you're at the point where it's obviously root bound and there's all roots and no soil in your pot and the pot's basically warping and losing shape from all the roots in there, or you're watering and water just sits on the surface and doesn't sink down into the pot very quickly because it's just all roots and it's formed like a, a complete barrier between and it's formed a complete barrier to stop water getting in quickly then yeah fine repot it but generally once every couple of years is fine and you only want to go up one pot size every time you repot so go from a seven inch pot to an eight inch wait another couple of years and go from an eight inch to a nine as for fertilizing these, no big deal there either. They're not overly demanding on fertilizers either because like I said, they're living in an environment in nature where their roots aren't even really in soil anyway. They're just basically getting rainwater running through their roots for a short period of time. So you don't necessarily have to fertilize them that often. If you do want to fertilize them and use like a liquid based fertilizer for your indoor plants, I would only do a half dose uh, and I'd only do it maybe every two months or even every three months. They're not demanding on ferts. Over fertilizing will actually cause you more problems than good. It doesn't hurt to rotate these plants too because um, as you can see, my one's got sort of even growth all the way around. If I spin it around, it's kind of got semi-even growth all the way around. Maybe a bit more on this side. If I rotate mine every few days or at least once a week, I'll turn it about a quarter or so because I got it near a window. Well, I've actually got it in two windows, so that actually helps with the rotating. I got like a, there's like a window there, and then there's a window in front too. So I got, it's in like a corner where there's a window on either side of the corner. But if you just got it next, so it makes it easier for me, but if you just got it kind of next to one window, it is good every few days just to spin it around a little bit. So you get even growth because if, let's say I got a window here and I don't rotate it, all these disc shaped leaves are eventually gonna turn to face the window. But then the side you're viewing the plant from is just going to have nothing nice to look at. It's going to just be stems and all the nice leaves are going to be facing the window. So ideally I would just rotate it around about a quarter every few days or at least once a week and then you get relatively even growth all the way around. Like my one I do rotate it. Um, I don't like keeping a schedule so I might sometimes forget but as you can see, if I spin it around, I guess that's the best side, but it has relatively even growth around it. It can't hurt to wipe the leaves down too, because these leaves can catch a lot of dust sitting around in your house. So just get like a damp microfiber cloth or a damp paper towel, give the leaves a wipe down every week or two, just so the plant can photosynthesize because dust build up on the leaves. It ruins their ability to photosynthesize to their full potential and it can just stop your plant growing properly. Now these plants do get a bit bigger than this one. This is still kind of small. This will probably get four to five times this size. It'll probably get about this high and about that round, eventually. Interesting fact also, uh, where these plants are native in China, in mountain ranges, they're actually an endangered species now. So they're just not a very common plant in the wild anymore. This is because, like I was saying, their habitat is so specific and specialized they can only grow on those mountain ranges that they live in China and that's it, that's all there is. So because of that, yeah, they're kind of an endangered plant in the wild. But thankfully, as far as like the plant, the plant nursery, growing, selling industry, whatever you want to call it goes, these are being produced pretty much the same as most other house plants. So they're pretty available for most people. Again, I suppose it depends where you live in the world. But for me, these aren't exactly too difficult to find if you know where to look. Right, well that's my video on the Paleopeperomoides and I hope that I've clarified how to keep these guys properly. Like I said, they are actually an easy plant. I've made them sound a little complicated. So to summarize slash simplify it, bright indirect light, well draining soil, and don't overwater them and don't over fertilize. And just rotate them around your window when you get a chance. That's basically it, they're not too hard. So, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to also bing that notification bell so you guys get notifications when I put new videos up. I'll also link my Instagram down below if any of you want to follow me there. But until then, I'll see you all in my next video.
拜。